Welcome to Sobriety Unleashed. Episode 5, which is headed Spiritual Navigator. And it is based on Proverbs 3, 1 to 12, from the Message Bible, which says, Good friend, don't forget all that I've taught you. Take to heart my commands. They'll help you to live a long, long time. A long life lived full and well. Don't lose your grip on love and loyalty. Tie them around your neck. Carve their initials on your heart. Earn a reputation for living well. In God's eyes. In the eyes of the people. Trust in God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything. Everywhere you go, he's the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all. Run to God. Run from evil. Your body will glow with health. Your very bones will will vibrate with life. Honour God with everything you own. Give him the first and the best. Your barns will be burst. Sorry, your barns will burst. Your wine vats, vats will brim over. But don't, dear friend, resent God's discipline. Don't sulk under his loving correction. It's the child that he loves that God corrects. A father's delight is behind all this. There are a few things in this episode that I want us to look at. The first is, it tells us in this scripture to keep God's commands. It says in Proverbs 3, 1 to 4, My child don't forget what I've taught you. Take to heart my command, because they'll help you to live a long, long time. A long life full and well. If we want to keep God's command, we have to learn his commands. And we learn his commands by studying his word, through prayer and meditation. That's how we improve our conscious contact with God. Embracing and keeping God's commands is the foundational in the journey of recovery. The verses highlight the importance of internalizing God's divine guidance, serving as a roadmap to a fulfilling and well-lived life in sobriety. The next thing that it tells us is to trust God's guidance. It says in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. Trusting in God's guidance is the cornerstone of navigating the complexities of recovery, and it is complex. There's a lot involved. It's a matter of total life change. It's a call to surrender. It's a call to surrender control. Allow God's wisdom to lead the way through our uncertainties, through our decisions, and through our temptations, because temptations will happen. The next thing it tells us to do is to honour God's provision. And it says in verses 9 to 10, Honour God with everything you own. Give him the first and the best. And your barns will be full and your wine vats will brim over. Honouring God's provision in our life involves recognising the source of our blessings and expressing gratitude for it. In recovery, acknowledge and giving back with a generous heart creates a cycle of abundance 
and reinforces the sense of spiritual connection. It's better to give than to receive. The, those verses finally suggest to us that we have to accept God's correction. Proverbs 11 and 12 says, My child, don't shrug off God's discipline. But don't be crushed by it either. It's the child he loves that God corrects. A father's delight is behind all of this. Accepting God's correction is an integral part of our spiritual growth in recovery. It's a reminder that challenges and corrections are expressions of love aimed at refining and moulding us into the people that God wants us to be as we journey on this road to recovery. There's a verse in Psalm 32, verse 8, that says, I tell you what I'll do. I'll guide you along the best pathway for your life. I'll advise you and watch over you. <coughs> and this verse reinforces the idea of divine guidance and recovery, assuring us that God leads us on the most optimal path for our lives. He knows what's best for us and he will help us to find that path and to follow that path if we put our trust in him. There's a verse in Isaiah 30, 21, which says, Your own ears will hear him. Right behind you, a voice will say, This is the way that you should go, whether right or left. God will speak to you and show you how you should go. Most people who've listened to these podcasts know that back in 1989, sorry, was it 89 or 88, I left Western Australia because I couldn't get recovery in West Australia. God told me, if you want to get it right, you have to leave this place and go on a path where I knew nothing. I had no plan and no idea where I was going or what I was going to do. But I trusted God. Even when I was drinking in a relapse, I trusted God. I knew that he was going to lead me to wherever I was going to go. And I heard him. I heard God say to me, if you want to be serious about it, get out of Western Australia. And for me, this verse in Isaiah is a reminder that God's guidance is ever-present in our lives. And the directions that we have to go are already set out. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you and not to abandon you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. An assurance that God's plan for our lives are filled with hope and with purpose. The best time in my life was when I found out God's purpose for my life. And it was to do something with people with addictions. And this ministry is a result of that. God told me, or asked me a question, he said, Archie, why are you not doing something with people in recovery? And here I am. God's plans are filled with hope and purpose and encouragement. There's going to be challenging times, but we need to know that God's got it all under control. And he hasn't brought us to where we are now to drop us. Navigating the spiritual path of recovery involves a harmonious blend of trust, obedience, gratitude and acceptance. And these elements beautifully reflect the wisdom of Proverbs and other relevant scriptures. 
These verses are a source of strength and inspiration for our journey. And they're verses that we need to hang on to and read regularly. If you want an answer to a question, read the Bible and listen to God and you will find it. Thank you for listening to this episode. I look forward to talking to you in episode six, which is the last episode of this series. And following that, I want to do a three-week series. It talks in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous about our stories disclosed in a general way, what we used to like, what happened, and what we're like now. And that's the three weeks that I want to make our next series. Thank you for listening again.